Thanksgiving is right around the corner and it's all about the food, baby. Most of us understand that Thanksgiving is made for stretchy pants and what about that? It's all about the abundance of food. There's just so much, you have no idea where to put it all. Hang on with me to the end and I'm gonna give you a surefire way to handle, well, more than you can handle. we get invited to a party and it doesn't quite go as we expected. Like 50 yeah. blow-ups in the front row. Yeah. Oh, Bass, I forgot to tell you. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> good. It's good. That's fine. By the way, my hair smelled like ketchup for days. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Sometimes we're brats, right? We throw fit or our food and we don't practice gratefulness. And we definitely don't live a life of abundance. A life Jesus so desperately wants to give us. And sometimes, let's be honest, we're just arrogant jerks. Let's take a quick look at a story in scripture where some folks missed the opportunity of a lifetime because they well, you'll see. Hey, and if you're interested in exploring the meaningful life that these people are about to miss, you can check out this video right here. If not, we're jumping over to Luke. Luke's in the New Testament, so probably about mm, two thirds of the way through a paper Bible. Luke was one of Jesus' followers, a, a really close one, and a doctor, so he writes a really detailed account of his hang time with Jesus. This is one of those stories, and it involves Sassmouth Jesus, who I love. I love Brass Tax Jesus. Like, oh, I love that journey for you, and then pow, he brings him the truth. So Jesus was teaching about humility and using this big feast as an example, not taking the best seat in the house, stuff like that. And one of the guys listening basically says, man, I can't wait for the banquet up in heaven. And Jesus goes, stone cold killer on everyone listening. I gotta love that. So we're in Luke 14 and we're starting in verse 16. Jesus replied with this story to the guy who was excited about the big buffet in heaven. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell all the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. You can screenshot those excuses for yourself. They come from Luke 14, 19 through 20. Jesus is using a parable here. We've talked about those before. Basically, it's just a, a, a story to illustrate a point. This guy is throwing a huge feast, a giant party. Think New Year's Eve kind of blowout, and everyone's just too busy. And in a minute, we're going to see what too busy for Jesus really means. So abundance has been offered. Folks have turned it down. One guy had to work. Another person was waiting to hang with the family or something like that. They weren't bad things to do necessarily, but think of it like this. I opened up the world's first free restaurant. And if that wasn't enough, I also paid people to eat at my restaurant. We haven't even opened yet. And the police just told us they had to shut down a mile of traffic and there's a thousand cars in line. Put it on up. Yeah! I've never ran a restaurant before. Money for you, money for you, money for you, money for you. You better come get a Beast Burger. Mr. Beast gives away a ton of stuff. This party was like being invited to be first in line to Mr. Beast's restaurant 
and turning it down. If you would choose to not turn it down like the rest of us, then like this video and give us a subscribe because this is video one of three on the importance of gratitude. So you're not gonna wanna miss the rest of the videos in this series. Now, if you hop back up in Luke earlier in chapter 14, Jesus is teaching on humility. And while he doesn't necessarily tie these two things together, I think it's actually one cohesive thought here. Sometimes the headings in our Bible make it seem like the direction of the conversation has changed. And I'm pretty sure that happens happened here. I think Jesus is using the banquet story and folks declining his invite to the party to show us something important about gratitude and living an abundant life. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. It's in Colossians. Jesus offers us an abundant life infinitely more than we can ask. So I wonder if it's arrogant to decline it or to ask or expect for less. Being too busy or preoccupied to enjoy the abundant life Jesus is offering us is arrogant. It's arrogant and maybe selfish to think that we can conjure with our own hands something important enough to overlook the party that Jesus offers to us. And another thing, this invite is not exclusive. Take a look at the rest of the passage. So the servant lets the king know of his bros are just too busy and instead of being sad, he flips it on him. So the master says, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that my house may be full. This guy was like, well, listen, if you're too busy to come, no problem. I'll just invite the homeless folks, right? Look behind the hedges. Pretty sure they were homeless. I know there are folks who are dying for abundant living. If you guys are too busy, stupid, or arrogant to take advantage of the offer, I know there are people who will. That's what he was saying. Sometimes we choose to live in scarcity. We decline the invite. We have created all that we want and in all our arrogance, we miss the party option that Jesus has offered us. We don't recognize the abundance Jesus has set right in front of us, a beautiful invitation found in John 10.10. 10. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. You want to be more gratitude than gratitude? You got to recognize that an abundant life really isn't about a Bugatti and a billion dollars. See, the folks in this story weren't asking the banquet giver for anything at all. They were just too preoccupied to recognize the deal when it came to them. So, a life of gratitude is mostly not about asking for stuff. It's mostly about being aware of what's already being offered to us and being wise and humble enough to take it when it comes. To see our life as full turkey dinner with green bean casserole, homemade rolls, and pumpkin pie, even when it's half a hot dog warmed in the microwave on a piece of stale bread. Abundant living isn't measured by what we have. It's measured by what we do with the invite. The folks in this story were not willing or ready to pivot when the invite for something more showed up, so they didn't. Jesus invites us into a relationship with himself, and we can often be too busy, too preoccupied, or honestly just too uninterested to see it. So often, we miss it. So what are you waiting for? The key to gratitude is recognizing the abundant life being offered to you and taking a hold of it. It's actually where the rich and satisfying life starts. The one that Jesus said was his purpose back in the book of John. It, it all starts with accepting the invite. Are you looking for that? Is your life more like a famine than a feast? Jesus is waiting to join you to make your life rich and fulfilling. You just have to ask him. And that's the key handling more than you can handle. Carrying the load, carrying the load of things that are good and great and carrying the load when it seems rough. The key is starting a relationship with Jesus. And if you'd like to do that, click the link in the, in the description and tell us because we'd love to talk to you about it. It's as simple as saying, Jesus, my life on my own is not rich and satisfying. I know I need you. Help me say yes to your invitation and click the link on the screen for the second video on the playlist titled Gratitude, Our Gratitude.